So as part of our agronomic uh, work on the different varieties, we've also included for a number of years now some seed rate work, uh, particularly on varieties where we've noticed that after introduction into the, uh, the farming environment, uh, they tend to perhaps produce a few less tillers uh, and a few less fertile ears than we would normally expect and have uh, investigated the idea of increasing seed rates by around 20% in order to try to get, get an uplift in fertile ear numbers. We started the work on Trinity several years ago and found that by increasing the seed rate by 20% uh, we increased fertile ear numbers by between 10 and 15% and got around about a 0.3 to 0.4 of a tonne increasing yield as a result. Now that's quite unusual for us as agronomists because we've spent years telling people to use lower rather than higher seed rates for ease of management. This year, uh, having had experience of X days over a couple of seasons and on this site in quite some detail last year, uh, we've decided to do the same work on X days because one thing that we noted last spring was that not necessarily the variety uh, being a shy tillerer, but it did tend to lose tillers, particularly in the drier weather conditions of last year, and perhaps yield as a result lagged a little bit in comparison to other varieties. So this season we've got exactly the same work here looking at 360 versus 300 seeds per, per square meter. The proof of the pudding will be in the eating uh, and the information will be interesting to see when it comes off the combine. Just to conclude the plot tour we wanted to just introduce uh, some work from an independent wheat plant breeder who used to be a senior plant breeder for one of the, the major wheat breeders in, in UK. Some of the varieties that he has bred in his previous life we've, we've discussed um, earlier on in the demonstration but this particular breeder has several years ago now set up his own independent breeding program and has now got uh, extensive breeding, screening and trialling facilities up in East Anglia and the three varieties that we show you here, AWG 14, 17 and 18 are the first fruits of his labours having been entered into the official monitoring schemes for the UK. Now what's very interesting with, with his approach is that he rather than using a relatively few number of parent lines in his crosses is really trawling back through his database and experiences of breeding wheat over very many years and pulling together some really quite interesting combinations of varieties to produce these new crosses and as any breeder will tell you you know whether he's got the number one variety on the recommended list and market share to his name there is a, a lot of hard work a lot of rejection going through that process of the lines that he's produced and being pipped at the post at the last minute by a competitor's variety can be hugely frustrating and extremely expensive. So therefore it's very encouraging, I find, to see a guy who's an independent those of you that attended our trials last year may remember that we, we spent quite a bit of time talking about the genetic diversity that there is within the recommended list and the number of parent lines that feature very regularly amongst mainstream varieties that we, we know grow. Um, the two varieties that we did identify that don't fall into that bracket are Extays and Skyfall, but the whole plethora of other varieties on the RL that have got four or five common parents, which means the genetic diversity that we are dealing with is, is really quite small. So this breeding program is designed not only to, to bring some commercially successful varieties to the marketplace, but also to help in growers and agronomists and us as seedsmen to understand how different those varieties are genetically to mainstream types so that we can help in broadening the, the range of varieties that individual growers have in the ground at any one time and managing the risk around the shifting patterns of diseases and as Chris made the point very early on in our introduction about the withdrawal of more and more active ingredients and our ability to actually manage some of these new varieties in, in current situations. Just as a final point, I did say earlier on that we'd had yield responses last year of as an average of around three and a half tonnes per hectare. Given the conditions that we've seen this growing season, I doubt that we will see responses to fungicides of that level. Firstly, because I think the, the wet winter, and as Andrew said, 
uh, that's impacted upon the ability of plants to establish in the first place and therefore yields will be suppressed to some extent as, as a result. But also the very dry spring that we've had has impacted the ability of disease to infect the plant and therefore the value of the fungicide will be reduced. But it will be interesting to see exactly what the combine uh, churns out at the end of the day and we have to remember that uh, as we saw last year it's not just in terms of final yield that fungicides are important but also in quality in terms of specific weight which is uh, of course a very important point for you all. But the other important point is that, as we can see at the moment, you know, we're recording this video on the 22nd of June. We've had some pretty hot weather beforehand. We're running into some hot weather again now. Years ago, we would have expected uh, yellow rust to be drying up under these conditions and brown rust to some extent to be doing the same thing. Within a number of those varieties, particularly the likes of Zayat, Blossom and Skyfall, where yellow rust is quite evident, then there is active sporulation going on and the th thoughts that pathologists have been putting forward that the new strains of yellow rust that we're seeing are somewhat more resilient than the old strains that we were used to in some of the old varieties uh, that we used to grow becomes ever more important and something that we need again to build into our fungicide planning for next year. That's the end of the presentation. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch uh, the video and hopefully it's been of, of some use. The event has been submitted to both BASIS and Enroso for CPD points. If you would like points added to your certificate numbers, email your details to either Nick Green at DENS or Oliver Bennett at Xantra if you'd like to make contact with us to discuss any of the points we've made in, in further detail, obviously we'd be more than happy to talk to you. Uh, all things being allowed to have in the winter months our technical briefing of the, uh, of the results from these trials and hopefully we'll be able to share those with you in, in, in some detail. We look forward to hopefully um, being able to resume normal service in 2021 um, when again we'll be holding our trials at uh, High Chimney Farms. Uh, thank you again to John and Elizabeth Haffenden for uh, agreeing to do that. We hope you found this of interest and good luck for harvest. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.